Hey, hey, hey. It is Sunday in Prescott, Arkansas. I'm sitting here hanging out, waiting for my delivery in the morning, which isn't 100 miles from here. I'll leave probably 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I have a 6 a.m. delivery time. But I wanted to do this video real quick. I was doing some inspections on my on my truck just giving it a good once over went ahead and adjusted my brakes while I was sitting and this young man came up and started talking to me he got a 2016 Freightliner with a DD15 engine and uh, he's an owner operator but he's leased on with someone and he was asking me about my truck and then you know am I running under my own authority or someone else's and uh, you know, is this my trailer or someone else's? Just general questions. And in my case, I went through the FMCSA website and I walked through the process myself to get my own authority. It's not that hard to do, didn't take that long, and it only cost me 300 bucks doing it myself versus, you know, seven to $800 having someone else do it. I was talking to him and was telling him, you know, I it's rare for me to come out this far from home. Typically, I run within four to five hundred miles of my house. The only reason I'm bringing this load out here is because C.H. Robinson is paying me the rate that I have to have in order to make it worth my while. And it's not that hard of a run. I left home yesterday at uh, 5.30 in the afternoon. And I got here about 3.15 this morning. And I'm 100, 110 miles from where I deliver tomorrow morning in Mount Pleasant, Texas. But... Yeah, I was telling that guy that I typically stay within four or five hundred miles from home because I can get, I can typically earn more when I do that. You know, I can, I can haul four and five loads a week and average somewhere, you know, depending on the load, depending on where I'm going week to week I can go somewhere between six and eight thousand a week on good weeks I can do between nine and ten but it's very rare this is I've had my authority for probably 18 months roughly and this is my third time coming out to Texas in that length of time. It's just longer loads, it just doesn't make financial sense. You know, if you, typically speaking, if you run from Atlanta to Dallas, and then you get a reload going back to the Atlanta area, you're gonna be able to get in two loads a week, usually. I can get in four and five loads a week if I'm staying in the four to five hundred mile range of my house and you know you're going to grow somewhere between four and five thousand dollars at today's rates you'll gross somewhere between four and five thousand dollars for those two loads i'll gross anywhere on an average week somewhere between six and eight thousand dollars on a good week between nine and ten uh, and I never ever haul heavier than 30,000 pounds. Those lighter loads pay just as much as the heavier loads, but the lighter loads, I get better fuel economy. It's less wear on the engine, transmission, rear differentials, your, your, your whole drivetrain has to work a lot less pulling those lighter loads than it does pulling the heavier loads, especially if you're going through the mountains, you know, East Tennessee, Western North Carolina, 
things like that. Yes, I will. I will take loads up into central Pennsylvania and even western Pennsylvania. It's a extremely rare occurrence for me to go to eastern PA. The farthest east I've gone in Pennsylvania is in, you know in recent months has been Hanover, York, Lancaster, that area. Typically I'll go up around Harrisburg, Hazleton, um, over around Pittsburgh, things like that. But still I'm within, you know, five, maybe six hundred miles of home. Uh, going up into Ohio. I, I rarely go into Georgia anymore because Georgia has gotten to be like Florida as far as freight leaving Georgia. Uh, there's not as much leaving Georgia now as what there used to be you know, a couple of years ago. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know if you know, a lot of the manufacturing has left and gone other places or uh, maybe I'm on the wrong load boards. I don't know. But looking at the DAT board, Florida and Georgia are kind of in the same same area as far as loads going out. Uh, but anyway, back to what I was talking about. You know, whenever you listen to Justin over on Just Trucking Channel, he'll tell you, you know your worth. And that's true, know your worth. Know the value of the asset that you have. Because brokers like Coyote, Convoy, C.H. Robinson, they don't have trucks to move the freight. They have to have you to move the freight. You have to know the value of your asset. And you know, you got hundred, hundred and thirty, $140,000 tied up in a truck, even if you've got fifty or $60,000 tied up in a truck. That is your asset. You're the one who has to pay for it, pay the maintenance, <clears throat> pay for the repairs, the insurance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all that costs money. So you have to control the negotiations. Don't let the brokers control the negotiations. Never take anything for less than what, what you know you can be profitable with. You know, brokers will only talk to you about loaded miles. They don't care about your deadhead miles. Doesn't matter to them if you have to deadhead one mile or 1,000 miles. They don't care. But deadheading costs you just like running loaded costs you. And when fuel these days is well over $5 a gallon, why on earth would you consider taking a load anywhere? I don't care if it's just going down the street for $2 a mile. 250 a mile, even 280 a mile. Why would you do that? That makes zero sense to me. Uh, you know, at three and a quarter a mile, that's questionable right there. But I hope you're going to straighten that thing up because you're like coming right towards me there, Warner. But, you know, this goes back to me preaching previously about you have to know what it costs you to operate but anyway you know you should give serious consideration to never hauling heavy loads ever I don't it works out fine for me and like I said it's a lot less wear on your truck a lot less operating expense for you so give that some thought and sit down and do the math. That's the only way you're gonna figure some of this stuff out is just sit down and put a pencil to it and do the math. So I'll let you go. I'll shut up talking for today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.